Hey everybody, Ed Kratz here with John McMullen, the co-host of Eagles Unfiltered, and we are at the Eagles Novacare Complex on Wednesday, whatever today is, September 8th. And game we, week. Game week, yeah, game week, man. I'm pumped. Um, I, you know, I think that... Uh, Did you get enough sleep? That, that was the first question. <laughs> Did you get enough sleep? Yeah, oh, I, I Weird don't know. first question. Yeah. Uh, well, the first question was why he's wearing all Philly stuff. He was dressed in, yeah. in Philly stuff, but that was just kind of a throwaway yeah. thing. By the um, way, I don't like that. I, I think he's pandering. Okay, well, at least it wasn't Sixers stuff. You know, Ben That's Simmons true. jersey or something like that. That's true. But uh, anyway, you know, we got Atlanta coming up here, right? The opener, Eagles kick it off down there in Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Sunday at 1 o'clock. It's going to be televised on Fox. Um and there's some interesting uh, dynamics taking place. First, let's start, John, uh, with the tight end position. You know, we talked to Dallas Goddard earlier this week on Labor Day, and he thought he'd have a contract by now, and he doesn't. He went into the offseason with the expectation he'd be the number one tight end. It doesn't appear like he is, although they're listed as co-tight ends on this depth chart the Eagles put out. Um, what, what do you think is the dynamic between Ertz and Goddard this season? And it starts on Sunday. Um, I think it'll be fine. I really do. I, I, you know, I think Nick Sirianni pretty clearly came in here with the thought process that he wasn't going to have Zach Ertz because of what was going on behind the scenes. I think everybody was in that camp. And that was the assumption from the Eagles as well, the Howie Roseman and the front office that eventually uh, Zach Ertz would get moved. But Howie Roseman, uh, to his credit, if you would like to give him credit, I know people don't uh, think that. Um, held to his standard of, I believe this is a good player. I need a day two pick for him in the draft. And ultimately, uh, obviously wasn't able to get that Zach Ertz is here. And by the way, we talked to Zach Ertz. Was that last weekend? Yeah. Uh, Zach true. even said, look, the Eagles believed in me more than everybody else because they said this guy's worth the third round pick. This guy's worth the third round pick. Nobody else around the NFL thought that coming off an injury plague season where he struggled, I think, mentally as well with the contract. But I got to tell you, from early in this camp, you could see pretty evident early on that Nick Sirianni was like, okay, I got this guy. I got to use him. This is a good football player. He wasn't expecting to have him. I think he's gotten the same place Doug Peterson would get to every year, saying, okay, I want to play receivers, but can I really justify taking Zach Ertz or Dallas Goddard off the field at times, especially in the key situation? Right. I think the answer to that is no. Yeah. I think they're both going to play. Yeah, and Shane Steichen said last week that it's kind of be kind of week to week dependent on how much 12 personnel they'll use versus 11 personnel. But my thing is, is okay, how, how – I mean, Goddard said all the right things when he spoke to us about being locked in. But we've seen before that contracts that go sour – affect the player's performance. And, and and I asked Sirianni about that today, and he said he doesn't get involved with the contract situation, and he's seen nothing but professionalism out of Dallas Goddard. But again, we're going to have to, in my opinion, see how that translates into the field if his mind wanders. I mean, we saw Zach Ertz last year. He really, his contract situation, I think, contributed to his bad season, and it may have affected some of his teammates, too, who were very close to him. So we're going to see how this affects Goddard uh, in the short term. And then, John, I want to ask you about your long-term opinion about this position. Could we see the Eagles perhaps trading Dallas Goddard and keeping a veteran like Ertz, who said he wants to retire in Philadelphia? And they have two young players on this roster at that position, and Jack Stoll and Tyree Jackson. So, you know, that, again, by not getting rid of Ertz or doing, you know, bringing him back, and I agree that it's a good move bringing him back, but this leads to all sorts of speculation as a pertains to these two guys what do you what's your take on that yeah i mean if you think about the whole perspective of what's going on at this particular position i i think with dallas goddard uh you know howie roseman was kind of waiting 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 for the sam bradford scenario interestingly he got it irv smith went down same team minnesota same team same gm rick spielman he called the eagles he didn't ask for zach Ertz. he asked for dallas goddard and from what i was told the Eagles gave a really, really big price uh, that the Vikings would obviously not meet, and they went in a different direction. So kind of tells you two things. Howie Roseman's always open for business. If Minnesota offered a first-round pick for Dallas Goddard, he'd probably be in Minnesota right now. If Deshaun Watson 
would ultimately reverse course and decide, hey, I'll put Philadelphia in the mix. The Eagles probably have to trade Dallas Goddard as a young player. So I don't think they want to trade him. I don't think they plan on trading him. But Howie Roseman is always open for business. And the fact that he has Zach Ertz makes that a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, guys that won't get traded are their three starting wide receivers, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, and Quez Watkins. Um, I think if I had to pick three players that I'm really excited to see this season, I think Devontae Smith would be on that list. Jalen Hurts would certainly be on that list. And Miles Sanders, who I think we've made a lot about him having struggles in the pass catching game. But I think Miles Sanders, to me, is really going to have a big season, both as a pass catcher and a running back. Um, so I'm excited to see these three receivers together, especially Devontae Smith and you know, to J Jalen Rager as well. Uh, but if you, if you had to put a name to three players that you're excited to see this season, John, who, who do you think you'd put there? Well, I think you have to start with the quarterback. Yeah. I mean, there's so much uncertainty. And you're right with Devontae Smith. I would try, I, I kind of think I have a feel for what Miles Sanders is. And I think if you listen to the coaching staff, they also want to be very careful. They've said they want to use a committee approach for a number of reasons. One, remember, Miles isn't Derrick Henry. I don't think he can handle 30 touches a game. So you want to keep him as healthy as possible to keep him out there for as many games as possible. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, I think we got to throw somebody in there. And I'm very interested because I think he's had a great camp. And I think people don't realize how good a player uh, Darius Slay is, and I, I want to see how Jonathan Gannon uses him uh, versus how he was used last year in his first year in Philadelphia. I think he's ready for a big, big season. I think he's going to be a top 10 cornerback in this league again. Leads the, leads the team in interceptions, you think? You know, that's tough because I, I think teams aren't going to throw at him a lot. I mean, that's one of those things when you have that reputation, when you're that good. They're going to look at the other side. They're going to look at Steven Nelson. They're going to look at Avante Maddox. So I don't know if he leads the team in interceptions, but I do think the Eagles are going to have the closest thing to a lockdown corner as you can have in the modern NFL. This is going to be yeah. a top 10 corner. Yeah, and even Steve Nelson, that's going to be a real interesting dynamic. The concern is, should something happen to Slay or Nelson, is the depth at that position. The Eagles signed two cornerbacks right, you know, pretty much off the street, basically. I mean, they, they poached... Uh, what was his name? Mac McBain. Uh, yeah, they signed him from the Denver Broncos practice, squad. practice squad, and then they claimed off waivers from the Colts. Uh, Andre uh, Chech Chechere. 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 It's yeah, Chechere. Pronounced, yeah, which so is a weird pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> it's Shashir. It looks, but it's Shashure. I actually looked that up because yeah. I didn't want to butcher it. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of length. I think there was some concern. You're right about. I think the Eagles are fine with Darius Slay and Steve Nelson, but if somebody gets banged up. I think we saw Zach McPherson as a rookie. Loki was great early in camp against third and second stringers. When they tried to look at him against first stringers, it wasn't as good. I've said it pretty consistently. It's really hard for young corners to play in this league. I think they wanted a little bit more depth. And you see that by the way they've, they've gone on the waiver wire. They've gone to other practice squads to add to the defensive backfield. So taking rookies out of the equation, there are four players that are going to make their Eagles debut on Sunday, uh, presumably. All, right, all four, I think, will play. Uh, three of them are on defense, and one's the punter, Aaron Sippus. Uh, that's going to be interesting. He had a good preseason, but we'll see when the lights go on uh, what Sippus can do. But, you know, the other three players are Ryan Kerrigan, Eric Wilson, the linebacker, and Anthony Harris, the safety. I think they were three very key offseason additions. And if you're going to make a move for the – in the offseason for a free agent. I think defense was the place to attack in free agency. And I'm, I think those three are going to have a big role on Sunday. What, what do you think? Yeah, and, the, you know, the one positive is that Anthony Harris, especially, and Eric Wilson especially, yeah. had a history with Jonathan Gannon, the type of defense that he wants to run. So in a lot of ways, you say a new player. In, in, in some ways, they were ahead of the other players because they were more familiar with Jonathan Gannon. So I think those two guys at least from a schematic standpoint, are going to be fine. Uh, the question is, look, we know Eric Wilson, very athletic, but not the best in run support. So, you know, can Atlanta take advantage of that? I'm not so sure because they're starting running back as Mike Davis, who isn't exactly, you know, Alvin Kamara or Dalvin Cook or Derrick Henry. So 
Um, maybe the Eagles get a break, but I think that's something to keep an eye on as the season goes on. Anthony Harris is a good player, man. He's going to be he's going to be good for this team. And Ryan Kerrigan, I think the most interesting thing about Ryan Kerrigan, Ed, is how are the Eagles going to use him? Is he just going to be the fourth defensive end? I don't think he's going to play that much because Brandon Graham is talented, Josh Sweat, Dirk Barnett. Those are the guys getting the majority of snaps. If they move Brian Kerrigan to that Sam linebacker position where they need help, let's mm -hmm. be honest, Jannard Avery's not proven, Patrick Johnson certainly not proven. If they move him there, I think that would be interesting. I, I think that's probably what you were going to see, I would guess, just because <laughs> the two names you threw out there, none of them obviously are, are as accomplished as Ryan Kerrigan. Now, you know, the flip of that is, is Kerrigan didn't do a whole lot in the preseason. I know he had the mental reps and went through his walkthrough, but he had that broken thumb that kind of, you know, limited what he was able to do, you know, physically uh, uh, in, in, you know, the practices with the Patriots and the Jets. So, but I think, you know, you're going to see him used in that role. I think the Eagles would be negligent if they didn't try to put him in that role. Um, and then, you know, like you said, Wilson and, and Harris, they're going to be real good additions. Harris and Singleton, I think, uh, are very underrated as a linebacker duo. And I, I like what T.J. Edwards, I liked his progression from coming in here as an undrafted rookie uh, free agent a couple years ago to where he is now. I think you don't skip really a beat when you put him on the field. Um, so I think this linebacker group might be a little bit underrated too. Uh, I'm really excited to see this defense play uh, on, on Sunday, um, which leads me, John, I don't know if you're ready for this to make a prediction on the game. Mm. Um, I came out today with my game-by-game -game win loss record for the Eagles, and I have them finishing nine and eight. Wow! Um, you don't think so? I had eight and nine. Eight I'm not. Nine. I'm not far okay. off on okay. on, on burst three sixty-five. My show, so good. We're right there. We're right in the same wheelhouse. Yeah. So obviously, then you pick the winner for Sunday. Uh, is one of those eight wins you have Sunday in Atlanta? You know, I'm 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 still wavering. I'm, I'm early on. I'm I'm sticking with Atlanta for for two reasons. I think Atlanta is a bad football team. Number one, you never want to play a bad football team early in the season before they realize how bad they are. I love that. I yeah. love that philosophy. It, and number two is you're on the road post-pandemic season, fans back for the first time, I think the environment's going to be crazy in Atlanta, even though that's not considered a passionate sports city. For those two reasons, if the game was in Philadelphia, I'd say Eagles are going to win it easily. I'm leaning towards the Falcons. Well, I think the line as of now is three and a half points, and that's usually the home field line. Um, and I agree, it's going to be a tough environment, but I think to counter that a little bit, the Eagles have a veteran offensive line, and that's where we we kind of see uh, crowd noise impact a team is on that front with false starts. We didn't see a lot of false starts this uh, preseason. Um, so, you know, there, it's a veteran group. Uh, if they can get Hertz's cadence down, I, I think they'll be okay in that regard. But you're right, that home field's tough. I have the Eagles winning uh, maybe somewhere around the lines of like 23 to 20, something along those lines. But, you know, I think that they have a better roster. I do um, think they have a better roster. I think, you know, I don't I don't know much about Arthur Smith, I have to admit, but I, I like Sirianni's approach uh, this offseason. I like the message that he's given these these players. And um, I'm not going to say he's a better coach than Arthur Smith, but I like him in this situation. Uh, and I just think the Eagles find a way to go down there and, and get their first win. I mean, both teams were winless in the preseason, yeah. too. Uh, you know, the Falcons and didn't look I, good. I don't think Matt Ryan played much. Uh, or, or maybe at all, but I have to check on that. But, you yeah. know, that's a 36-year-old veteran quarterback. Obviously, Jalen Hurts played 10 reps in the preseason. X Factor I want to mention because I mentioned this to you off air. The only kick returner in the NFL in the modern environment I'm worried about is Cordero Patterson. He's in Atlanta. You've seen him in the past when he played the Eagles. This might be the greatest kickoff returner I've ever seen. I haven't seen a lot from the Eagles in special teams. They better be buttoned up. Or Jake Elliott, Aaron Sipos, whoever's going to kick off, better kick it out of the end zone. Yeah, that's a great that's a great X factor, Corderell Patterson. Um, but yeah, that and that could you know special teams. We, the Eagles really didn't do a very good job uh, in certain aspects of special teams this preseason. You hope by 
you know, focusing in on the 53 men that are going to be out there, 46 actually on game day, and they have more defined roles that that will improve. Uh, and it's going to have to. I mean, because you don't want special teams to have to play a role in this game because maybe that's where the Falcons do have an edge. Um, but overall, I think top to bottom, the Eagles have a better roster, uh, and I think they'll find a way to win the game. But we're going to find out. Uh, John and I are going to be in Atlanta. Uh, so, you know, we'll have everything for you uh, post game or, or the next day, whenever. Uh, until then, thanks again, everybody, for listening and uh, enjoy the game.